How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back to another review. Um, a little bit of a side by side by side. A little bit of vertical, hopeful goodness in the form of Everett from Hill Forms. That is their 16, 17, and 18. Um, I actually just posted uh, Everett review. Oh God, what was it? Not even a month ago at the time of this taping. Um, I actually went to Hill Farmstead. Um, when I was up there for my honeymoon, uh, ended up going to the brewery, hanging out, having a couple of beers, ended up meeting with one of my viewers, Jacob, I uh, ended up having, uh, hanging out, having a couple of beers, having a good time, brought some beer back, Everett was one of them, ended up filming a review for that, awesome, done and done, um, but then like, um, you know, about a month and a half, well, let's say a month ago, right about when I posted the Everett review, um, I belong to a Facebook group that is about beer, I think all of us who are dumb enough to have Facebook, um, probably are involved in something like that. But we got a pretty cool group going. It was actually a Northeastern Pennsylvania group. Now they live in Jersey, still part of it. Just in the edge of Northeast PA, so I'm still allowed, I guess. But um, we do raffles on there um, about once, twice a year. And I, by we, I'm going to say we a lot. There's a lot more people have more heavily involved with the raffles as far as what goes on. But I'm going to say we anyway, because it's part of the group. Anyway. We do raffles, and what we do, it's not necessarily like, oh, let's let's make some money off beer. Um, everybody in the group just donates beer, and um, we end up selling $5 tickets for raffles for the beer that's donated, and, but all that money goes to a charity. We pick a charity. Um, this time, it was an autism charity. Um, I bought a couple tickets, and I am winning this vertical um, of, uh, of uh, Everett, so I figured, you know, a vertical, you got to kind of review it, you know what I mean? So... You just got to ever review. I'm curious to see if my 18 um, review is even similar. But anyway, regardless, you're going to get one again, but you're going to get a vertical this time. I don't know what else to tell you. Other than we're going to dive into a sucker. Um, let's just read one of them. Um, it's pretty much going to be all the same. Everett Robust American Porter. Um, it was uh, Everett was our grandfather's brother. Hill Farm said it rests upon a land that once home was home to him and his 13 siblings. Um, it was a beer that he imagined drinking with him. Uh, and it's unfiltered, naturally carbonated, decadent in its depth with a complex backbone of chocolate coffee and multi sweetness. Um, like I said, this was bottled 817, 2016. Um, so it's just under um, the two year mark. Um, this actually doesn't have a canning date on it, I don't believe. It says 1388 Everett. Um, but I. You have a good authority that is the uh, 17 version, and this is the 18 version. It's probably the same exact bottle that I had, which was 4-11-2018. Um, so, yeah. Let's have at it. Uh, Label-wise, you know, Hill no Farm said to a T. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? So, how are we going to do this? Let's uh, just kind of throw these three glasses here. Let's do the two bottles first, and then we'll pour the can last. Just because that kind of makes sense to me, so... Give this the old dual bottle treatment. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Everett's probably one of, if not my favorite, robust porter on the market. I think I talked about this um, when I um, did the original review of it. I, uh, I said, uh, I think it was between this and a really aged Smutty Nose, a big beer series, a Baltic Porter. Uh, kind of, that was their kind of big, robust kind of porter. Um, I kind of put this in that kind of vein, more of a Baltic Porter than anything else because of its ABV and how it goes down for me. But, uh, but yeah. Let's see what this sucker has to offer. What is the ABV on this? I forget. I don't know what I'm going to do with that can. Does it actually have the ABV? Oh, no, it doesn't. Does it? Who cares? Anyway, what do we have going on here? Um, you know, a bigger head coming off the can version. Um, that, I don't know if that's just because the way the can pours, whatnot, but it's actually a markedly darker head to it, too. I don't know if you can tell um, on camera, but it's 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 a much, much darker um, head. I mean, the bodies look the same. It's just almost a jet black beer to begin with, but um, it's got a big, creamier, darker head on it. Infinitely creamier. These other two dissipated pretty quickly. Again, bottle pours comes out a little bit more gentle than the kind of the can kind of gets agitated with the lip and all that kind of stuff but um yeah much much darker and it's not a matter of it being uh kind of scrunched you know what i mean these two heads not being as big it's not showing that kind of darkness it actually does look quite a bit darker so okay let's dive into the nose if i put that there i'll probably block stuff so we're just gonna leave the can off to the side 16 first 
yeah, just rich maltiness. Not a ton to it, to be perfectly honest with you. Rich malty sweetness, a, a soft, soft malty bitterness to it. Um, it's just coming off very cocoa. Um, not getting into that kind of candy cocoa puff region, but airing a little bit close to it, so you get a little bit of that kind of malty sweetness. Almost like there's a little bit of kind of soft vanilla to it. And a nice, rich kind of chocolatiness. And a soft, soft, soft. Very soft. Three softs. How about that? Bitterness to it. So, yeah. It smells quite nice. Let's give this uh, 17 a whirl. Okay, there's a big roasty character. It's still not getting in bittering side of things, but it's coming off way more roasty. Kind of edging towards that coffee vibe thing in this one. That chocolate component wall there is much smaller. Um, then that 16. Yeah, she smells nice. Just uh, quite a bit different, actually. It still has that rich, robust chocolatiness to it, but, you know, you get that big roasted component, a bit bigger in this one, um, where that kind of soft, kind of chocolatey, where I said this one had kind of like a dabble of vanilla kind of vibe to that chocolate. This one, not so much, just the soft, kind of semi-sweet kind of chocolate thing going on. Let's give the old 18 a whirl. And it's kind of, both of them, um, uh, the least of both worlds, where this one has that kind of, soft 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 rose to it this has that more softer kind of chocolate that's pretty much what i'm getting in 18 here soft roast soft um chocolatiness even at soft bittering it's almost like uh, these two were almost cuvade and that's kind of what you're getting in this one so yeah yeah big chocolate sweet dab of vanilla kind of goodness going on in this one you get that big roasted component but it's not bittering a big roasted component airing close to the side of kind of coffee on this one and this one is kind of the smaller portions of these two the flips of these two but this one has a little bit less chocolate this one has a little bit of that less roast it's kind of like that little bit of roast a little bit of chocolate over here is that in a 16 cheers big roast component so you're getting that chocolate it's coming off slightly powdery slightly kind of chalky and you get a bigger roast component that after you swallow just kind of pops and becomes gigantic so you get that soft powdery kind of chocolate component bittering running around all the edges of everything and once you swallow and you just let it sit for a bit and then you wash this big huge gigantic roast component I had some water to drink on this one, but I'm not going to do that. But yeah, quite nice. Drinkable. Um, uh, the roast component is much bigger than those lead you to believe, but you're getting that nice, big, impactful kind of robust porter. 7 is 17. Yeah, it's weird because I talked about this one having a much bigger roast component. It's almost flip flop now. Roast is so big and gigantic on this one, on that, on that 16. Then the 17, while it's still there, and after you swallow it, kind of picks up and gains a little bit of steam. It's not nearly as big. It's a bit more kind of, instead of being kind of, kind of that semi-sweet chocolate, it's definitely getting a little bit closer to that dark, rich, dark uh, baker's kind of chocolate. But yeah, it's so crazy how that flipped the script. So where this is probably a richer chocolate than this. And this one has the bigger roast where on a nose it was kind of flipped. Yeah, and it's just so striking how much bigger that roast component is on this one. It's so weird. It bugged me out because it's so flipped on a nose, it's not even funny. Let's dive into that 18. Cheers. It's bizarrely what you would think based off of the nose, which is so weird because both of these didn't lead you to believe that. It is the marriage of these two, almost like you mixed it, cuvee, blended both of those together. You're getting that bigger roasted component in here, but not nearly as big as this one. Some are a little bit smaller, but bigger than this one over here, and you're getting that bigger kind of chocolate component. It's coming off a little bit more kind of uh, semi-sweet chocolate as opposed to that dark baker's chocolate. So it's a bit creamier. That vanilla thing, I didn't get much in there. Probably getting a touch of it 
more sweetness basically over here in the 18 version. It's a really fun little vertical because it's just so weird because this one and this one smell like this one and this one tastes, but this one from the nose and the taste smells like the kind of mixture the, of these two together. That's some Hill Farm said magic for you there, baby. Uh, yeah, it's a fun little vertical to do. Uh, is there a huge, gigantic difference between all of them? No. Um, like I said, the roast is much bigger and uh, bigger than the sweetness and the chocolate and all that stuff. And, in, and the noses and the script and the taste. And this one's kind of falling somewhere in between. You know, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because, you know, you have this. And then while ages, a component of this is going to rise and fall. And then each one of these, it could be that it just kind of gets to this point where the roast kind of isn't as big. And for some reason, it kind of gains steam down the line. I don't know. But um, it, it's, it's fun to see how it changes. Now, like I said, this one seemed to have a much darker head on it. So, uh, again, batch variance comes into play. This is not science as much as I'd like it to look like it. Uh, but it, it's fun. It's a fun little kind of thing to do. The second I got the actual vertical in that kind of, sh um, in that raffle, um, I had to do it. And I'm glad I did because it was pretty damn fun. Now, I don't want to cuvee them, but I kind of want to mix these two together to see if it tastes like that one. I wish I had an extra glass floating around. But I don't, so you're not going to do that. But anyway. Man, wish I had water. Wish I had an extra glass. Mm. Yeah, it's so unique. Yeah, that was fun. Nice beers. Um, so, yeah. All in all, like I said, still... One of my favorite, if not my favorite, robust porter out there. Well done across the board. How it changes over time. It has redeeming qualities on both ends of things. So, you know, maybe if you're a little bit more of a roasty, toasty kind of guy, let it sit a little bit longer. If you like that chocolate to kind of be a little bit more forward, don't let it sit as long. Or let it sit really long and see what it turns into. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to end up finding a little bit older vertical, if there is one. I'm sure I'm pretty sure they've been doing Everett forever. Um, and uh, and see how it ages on the long haul. Probably won't be able to find a vertical, but at least find an older bottle and uh, see what's what. So there you go. Um, I mean, I'm you know I'm not going to go through the whole spiel of is it one of my favorite robust porters? Sure, value availability, health farm set, all that stuff. And just say if you like what we like, if you like big, bold, robust um, beers, but you want something that is big, bold, and robust in still a porter. And that's the thing that I said I think in my other video, kind of bang it home here is that it's still a porter. It doesn't, it's not an imperial stout. It still has that nice, creamy, roasty vibes. It doesn't get over the top. It doesn't get too crazy. So if porters are your jam, this is going to do you proper. There you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our vertical. Um, if you did, <clears throat> didn't, anywhere in between down there, words and stuff. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little vertical right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.